morning, northeast wind ripping through a sky as gray as an undertaker's glove. Evil snow spirits dance at the intersection of De Lorimier and Notre Dame. Grease-stained spumes moaning, swirling. Don't give a damn. What's left of me has been numb since last November. Gershon, I hate it here. Take me back to New York, where the road signs are readable and the sales clerks let you speak English. Never in my wildest dreams did I imagine making family here. Now this, this question, what do you mean it will blow over? What's to blow over with that, that cross hanging over our heads all day? This is a shande, this is mishige in guns, a kreutz. Look at these leaves, still green, not even gold yet, and they're dropping off the trees. These are not leaves from Jewish trees, Gersh. <laughs> leaves from Jewish trees are programmed to hold on right to the very end. Help me poster, says Dave into my answering machine. So did you catch the referendum results? Bah oui, I heard it on the car radio. Well? On va en avoir un autre, c'est tout. But did you vote? I voted. How? Ah, it's a secret. Anyway, I don't want to talk about politics. I want to talk about Chinese food and a few other things. <laughs> it sounds serious. <laughs> Let me top up my scotch first. Perfect opportunity to yell your head off. A good long belly scream might be just the thing, followed by barks and foot stomping. <coughs> Boo-hoo, Perzo! Something like that. For so many reasons, we were right to leave. Already, his face is brighter. Hey, Martha, did you see that couple in the blue SUV? I wish I hadn't. <coughs> Ice snaked around their bodies, crushing them together. Martha, wait up! He catches up to me, and we stop. We gaze at the transmuted cityscape we are leaving behind. The sunlight's reflection almost blinds me. Ice blankets the island of Montreal. After all my insensitive bravado shrugging off the so-called ice storm of 98, I suddenly had a million questions running through my mind. What would I do? What would I eat? Damn this plateau lifestyle! I wait for the sound of morning. I wait for the noise of traffic rising into the day. In the quiet and the new light, the pink street shimmers. A kind of fabric the road puts on to face the new day. A costume, maybe. Tool and spangles, as if the town were a little girl. It is with a great sadness we must announce the closing of St. Lawrence Bakery. We thank our loyal customers retails and wholesale, who have remained with us and who have appreciated our bread, Danish, and pastry products, where the technology was primarily our minds and hands. Thank you. Thank you very much. Way too much leather. <laughs> Romy rewards her with the requisite dry smile. Then she joins Sam on the ottoman and begin, begins to unhook the laces of both of her long black boots. Sam watches the deft movement of Romy's hands and notes the oddly masculine heaviness of her many silver rings. Sam and Romy spend every day together. They have more sex than Sam thought was possible. <laughs> Fresh basil, pungent cheese. I've never heard of. And red peppers broiled until their blackened skins can be slipped off under cold running water. She learns to begin with oil, herbs, and heat, and to wait for their perfume before adding more ingredients. She learns about the importance of the right ingredients. An organic cream. The woman in the white coat was standing on the curb with two other women next to her. A man came up behind, took her arm, tried to lead her away. She struggled. Her coat fell open. 
and underneath, Carol could see she wore only underwear, a camisole, stockings with fancy garters, all white. Carol shut her eyes and tried to concentrate. She was going to have to push the car over to the side of the road. She was going to have to continue on alone. Ahead, an unwelcome vision from his past. A group of Hasidic men, tall in their hats, side locks, swinging rhythmically. They were carrying holy books, but they were not debating spiritual matters. They were commenting on how bad business was, the one issue they could all agree on. Morris Allen understood every word they said. A quick lateral move, he grabbed a young one by the lapels. Ruddy skin, unformed features, eyes swimming behind Coke bottle glasses. He came to an abrupt halt. They all had to. In these heat, you are wearing these heavy clothes? It is the law. Now, if you please, sir. That's an unadulterated crap. <laughs> well, it is written in the law that you have to wear a wool jacket when it's 80 degrees outside. <laughs> Show me the passage where state has oi. Huh? <laughs> where it says you have to sweat like a pig for the Almighty. I've read the whole McGill. It's an interpretation, sir. falls in love after one date. You're the kind of guy who's always feeling sorry for yourself. You made it with your best friend's girlfriend this morning. You're an idiot. A thin man, very dark eyeshadows, looking straight in my face, as if, are you crazy? There were times when Lenny Rosenthal suspected Sandrine must be on some kind of drug. He allowed it might be the chemistry between them. They could have sex twice a day and still be interested in fondling each other until they fell asleep. He thought it would wear off after a few athletic weekends, but he was wrong. On my way to the bus station, I saw two women fighting on the platform of the Charlevoix metro stop. One kept screaming, you bitch! Uh, the other with a line of blood on her neck, retorting. Laisse-moi tranquille! Bounce, bounce, swap, bounce, bounce, swap, bounce, bounce, swap. The marvel of the Montreal accent. Skitterish, lightning quick. Rough, but musical in a way. French blending into English and English into French with seamless fluidity. See, okay to stay late to blow the show. A happening city, a place that cared about, well... Cheese, for instance. <laughs> and by the slimmest of possible margins, he was right. In spite of the barriers that separated communities, some mysterious power holds the city. It has to be more than just common ground. The word common does not touch what was happening here. It's a kind of miracle a bond of the spirit. With her mind holding the word spirit, Ruhama feels hopeful again, even at home, at least for a moment. Beyond the place where language ends, the eyes. 